My name is Dr. Marsha Gordon. I'm the president and CEO of the Business Council of Westchester. And we are absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to continue our educational series is in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion by having a discussion about successful strategies and business benefits of hiring people with developmental disabilities. This is especially appropriate in April. April's coming to a close because April is Autism Acceptance Month. We know that individuals with disabilities make up the largest minority group in America, yet are often least accounted for when it comes to conversations and practices regarding equal rights and anti-discrimination. They are also still twice as likely to be unemployed compared to those without a disability. So thank you so much again for joining the Business Council of Westchester and an esteemed panel of topic experts and Westchester County employers as we discuss the benefits of having a diverse and skilled workforce and how hiring individuals with disabilities can indeed contribute to your business goals, can inspire your workforce, and can add to your company culture. This morning, we're going to be hearing from Sally Paul, Paul the Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer at Regeneron, a flagship employer for the ARC of Westchester since 2011. They have hired 12 individuals and eight re remain employed there today. One full-time, seven part-time, and they're a Business Council of Westchester member, we are very proud to say. And Sally is here, is here to, to share her thoughts on the topic of workplace diversity, equity, and inclusion. And let's all applaud Westchester, uh, Regeneron. Let's applaud Westchester too, but let's applaud Regeneron for the incredible work they did to save so many lives during COVID. And also Tibby Guzman, the executive director and CEO at the ARC of Westchester, the largest provider of programs and services for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities in Westchester. And again, a BCW member, Tibby will share successful strategies for hiring individuals with, and with developmental disabilities. And we have three of the ARC Westchester's current employment business partners here to share their personal experiences with hiring individuals with IDD from, from, from the ARC Westchester's employment program and business benefits. Employer, employer one, I hope he's joined us, is Scott Pearl, the managing director of ABB Labs, which is part of ABB Optical Group, an employment business partner with ARC since 2016. They have hired eight full-time, part-time employees through ARC. Employer uh, two, Sean Mead, a general manager from Cambria Hotels and Suites, is an employment business partner with ARC since 2018. They've hired two part-time employees through ARC. And finally, Tony Justick, Managing Partner, Maya Markey and Justic, LLP, and past chairman of the Business Council of Westchester, has been an employment part business partner since 2018. He's hired one part-time employ employee through ARC. Thank you all for being with us today. Before we get to the panel, it always gives me great pleasure to introduce our County Executive, George Latimer, to say a few words. George? I think we need to get the sound going on this. Equity, equity and inclusion, successful strategies and business benefits of hiring people with developmental disabilities is a very timely topic. 
and the individuals that will be presenting today and the dialogue that comes out of this is essential. We want to make sure that we have an economy that works for everyone. And for those who do have disabilities, we want them to be as productive as this has allowed them. So we hope that we can create an inclusive workforce in Westchester County for our businesses, our non for profits, for all sorts of uh, places of employment. We know that uh, this organization, the Business Council of Westchester, is a champion for inclusive hiring. We hope that today's seminar goes in that general direction and gives you some of the information you need to help you achieve that goal. Thanks very much for participating. Thank you, George. Thank you, as always, for your great partnership, for your great leadership, and for, and for the example county government sets, sets as well. So we're going to start with Sally, Sally Paul from Regeneron. So Sally, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, we were all facing employee hiring, motivating, and retention challenges at our businesses due to the economy business talent needs versus employee skills and shifts in our population. Now, as we emerge from the pandemic, these challenges are joined by a significant increase in remote workplaces and businesses increased awareness and desire to build a more diverse, equitable and inclusive workforce. As the chief HR officer at Regeneron, an employer that believes deeply in the benefits of hiring for a diverse workforce and has been at the forefront of the DEI movement. Could you share with the group your perspective on those current business challenges and how you and Regeneron are addressing them? Sally? Sally, you need to unmute. Famous words. That is a, I, you, you would think a year into the pandemic, we would all remember to take ourselves off of mute. Marsha, thank you, and good morning, everyone. Um, before I sort of dig in to the meat of the question that you're, you're asking, Marsha, I would like to say something. You made a comment in your introductory remarks that I think is so important, which is that this population of, of uh, intellectually or developmentally disabled uh, citizens is probably the largest or one of the largest underserved populations that we have across this country. And it's one reason why our ability to come together, not just as employers, but just as citizens in Westchester to support the work of the ARC Westchester, it's so important. We're grateful to be, to you and your entire staff for what you've been able to maintain and achieve in these past 14 months. We know that any organization that relies on the support of individual citizens in the local community is only harder when times are particularly challenging. And so I just wanna say that from Regeneron, our hat is off to you and your entire team. And we are so honored to be part of the family of businesses that are actually able to help support the critical work that you take on. But, so I'm going to turn now and just talk for a minute about Regeneron because as many of you know, we're fortunate to be founder led more than 30 years uh, into the company's history. And the importance of that I think is pretty profound because we have started at from the very beginning with an ethos of the value of diversity and diversity in all of its forms, whether it be a person's background and upbringing or a more traditional definition of diversity. But what we truly realize is that this is an insufficient way to make a meaningful difference. As employers, what is most critical for us is to widen the aperture through which we're actually viewing the lens of DEI. So diversity is critically important and it's foundational to having strong inclusive cultures. But by the same token, in the absence of diversity and inclusion, it's very difficult to achieve true equity. Our, our focus at Regeneron, and I will give a full credit to our chief DEI officer, Smita Palai, 
for really helping us to channel our efforts into three strategic pillars that revolve around health equity, social equity, and talent equity. And our partnership with the ARC really allows us to make a difference in both talent equity and social equity because we are realizing that these are individuals who have value to contribute. They can make a difference in the business outcomes and the partnership in setting up the right individual with the right work actually enables it to be successful nearly all the time. And um, Marsha, you mentioned that, you know, we've had the good fortune to partner with the ARC Westchester for a decade now, which actually kind of blows me away. And the continuity of the workforce that we have through the ARC Westchester, it's amazing. We have longer tenure in some cases with these employees and colleagues than we've seen uh, from people uh, working in other types of roles. So the outcome for our business is I think threefold. The first is that it keeps visible the viability of these individuals and the opportunity that they have to contribute meaningfully to the work of the company. It, it makes sure that they are not an invisible part of the workforce or of the broader community in which we are living and operating. But secondly, I think it helps to reinforce the need that each of us have to not be narrow in our focus about the topic of DEI. That looking as broadly as possible, we realize that underserved and underrepresented populations in our workforce go way beyond sort of the typical focus on gender or ethnicity. So what we find is that we have partnerships where we have our internal colleagues helping to manage the work. We have partnerships with colleagues in Tib on Tibby's team. And between the two, we are able to ensure that we have roles set up appropriately with the right level of oversight and that we have the right individuals who are targeted for those roles. So it is a strong recipe for success. And this partnership has never faltered. So I'm gonna pause because I could probably wax poetic for <laughs> a bit longer, but I would just say that health equity, social equity and talent equity are three critically important DEI pillars for Regeneron. They're fully woven into our cultural narrative and we're on a journey like every other employer. We're pretty good, but we're not perfect. And we still have a lot of opportunity to continue on our own journey. And we're just grateful that the partnership we have with the ARC Westchester is a meaningful, a meaningful part of that. Thank, thank you so much, Sally. And to have a company like Regeneron in every way, leading the way for other employers and showing other employers of all sizes and sectors that having um, this kind of partnership and employing people from the ARC and people with, um, with, with intellectual and developmental disabilities really works has been so meaningful from you. Over the, over the years. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for everything Regeneron does. By the way, if anyone has any questions or comments, please put it in the chat box or Q&A box. We will try to get to them at the end of the program. But now moving the program along, my next question is directed to Sean Mead, the general manager at Cambria Hotels and Suites. Sean, you began your partnership with the ARC Westchester in 2018 and currently employ two part-time individuals. How did your connection with the ARC Westchester happen and what sparked your interest in hiring someone with intellectual and developmental disabilities? Sean? Uh, thank you, Marcia. Good morning, everybody. My name is Sean Mead. I'm the general manager at the Cambria Hotel, uh, White Plains downtown. And I have the privilege of being part of ARC Westchester uh, since 2018. 
I also have the privilege of being part of the Business Advisory Council. And the Business Advisory Council is a program um, that really helps taking the interns, the individuals with developmental disabilities, um, you know, from a young adult age and bringing them into the workforce. Sometimes these individuals um, need additional training. Um, and so on the Business Advisory Council, we help um, with resumes, we help interview the candidates, we get them prepped to uh, get into the actual workforce. And it's, um, it's been a privilege to be part of that. And it's been very rewarding. Um, so I really get to see the participants from Arc Westchester from the first stages. Um, they come to the Cambria Hotel for a site tour and they get to see all the departments and uh, all the different positions that are available in a hotel. Um, so as the program develops, we have opportunities to help with interviews and, uh, you know, my partnership uh, then proceeded to have opportunities to employ some of the indiv individuals at our hotel. And that's been a great opportunity. Staffing for hospitality has always been a challenge and will always be a challenge. Uh, you know, think to yourself when you're traveling to hotels, what's important to you? Um, you know, cleanliness, a friendly face, right, a smile. Um, these are characteristics uh, that the participants very often have. They're very friendly. That's quite important as well, too. So um, we had a need, right? And we also had a resource. And um, at the Cambria Hotel back in 2018, we hired our first participant from Mark Westchester, um, Eddie, who is currently with us today. And the story about Eddie is great. I'll get to that in just a moment, but I also wanted to talk about one of my most rewarding events that I've had in my professional career is when I was able to be the keynote speaker at the graduation for Arc Westchester. Um, I don't cry very often, and I had was really struggling to hold back tears, and I wasn't able to do it. it you know, looking back on this partnership, it's just been absolutely remarkable, uh, you know, personally for our hotel, um, you know, for the participants. Um, so it's been a, it's been really nice and. When we started this partnership, I didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into uh, from an employment standpoint. And uh, let me tell, let me talk about that just a little bit. So the program works great uh, for hospitality and other organizations and industries as well. Uh, when we hired Eddie, we had a full-time job coach that was on site for us. And what that job coach is responsible for doing is getting the uh, participants acclimated and into their position. So Eddie started, in a maintenance position at the hotel doing general maintenance around the hotel. He was trained in what he needed to do prior to getting here. And as he proceeded in his uh, path here at the Cambria Hotel, he's been uh, promoted into a different position of what's called a breakfast runner, where he's able to deliver breakfast to our guest rooms. Um, and I would also like to mention that while during the pandemic, our hotel, which normally has a staff of 55 people, went down to six people. Eddie was one of the first or second people that we brought back. He would call and check in with us once a month. Sean, when can I, when can I come back to work? When can I come back to work? And uh, he was one of the first people to come back. And it was so nice to see him. He's so excited every day. Um, we talked about from a guest standpoint, what's important, but also from an employer standpoint, being on time, right? Being punctual, uh, be looking professional. Now, um, with Eddie, he, his shift starts at 630 uh, in the morning at the Cambria Hotel. That's when breakfast starts for our guests. Um, he's never late. He's always on time, looking very presentable. And if there are challenges, here's the biggest part that I want to talk about today, is that if there are challenges with any of the participants, um, they get additional training. And we have job coaches very readily accessible who will come in, who are uh, you know, trained and highly educated in dealing with IDD. And that's, the, that's really a great opportunity um, to have that. So you know that for some reason, if a participant is struggling in a certain area, you do have resources available. Uh, and Marie and Nancy um, at Arc Westchester have been absolutely great. Um, we have each other's cell phones, we communicate constantly. Um, so we talked about a little bit about the jobs that we have available. Um, we plan to hire more in the future. I'm still part of the Business Advisory Council. This year's class was a little bit smaller. Uh, but I think May 25th, they're coming back to have a uh, site tour here at the hotel. And uh, as things get back to normal, our partnership is getting back to normal as well. So uh, super excited to be part of this. And uh, thank you, everybody, for today.
Sean, your your work and your enthusiasm and and the commitment of the hotel is really amazing. We thank you. And you know, it makes everybody, you know, when you have an employer and when you hear an employer that has such vision, guess what? It's good for business because now any anytime we have guests that coming in from outside Westchester in the White Plains area, Cambria Hotel. So thank you. Thank you. Um, the next question is directed to Scott Pearl, the managing partner at ABB Labs, which is part of ABB Optical. Scott, uh, Optical Group, Scott, you began your partnership with the ARC Westchester in 2016 and now employ eight individuals, a combination of full-time and part-time at ABB Optical. Can you please share with the group the impact these eight individuals have had on the workplace um, not just God's work or charity, but real impact and the positive impact on your bottom line. And by the way, I just want to go back to something that Sean spoke about and Scott, you'll probably touch on because it came up in one of the questions about training. And I know, and I listened very carefully to Sean's remark about job coaches and the support that the Ark of Westchester provides employers and employees in terms of job training. So Scott, I'll turn, I'll, I'll turn it over to you now. Oh, thank you, Marsha. Pleasure to be here. Um, ABB Optical is the largest uh, distributor in the optical space in the United States, and we service optical retail of all sizes and an optometrist, primarily. And within that business, there's a manufacturing segment, um, which I manage, and we have optical lens laboratories, the, the factories, so to speak, that put lenses in manufacturing, put lenses and eyeglasses. So to answer your question, I'll say this, it, it has been an absolutely dream match uh, for ABB in our New York facility. Um, you, you bring up coaches um, and I'll step back and, and, and say something that I've thought and said before, where do you find an organization that can bring you talent? And I use that word intentionally because the result of the coach and the match and the work on both sides adds talent. We run factories. And so attendance, consistency, execution, and teamwork is what governs our success or failure. And for years, um, we've been able to onboard uh, with Maria Vargas and various job coaches and our, and our managers um, what I consider to be dream matches. Dream matches are um, positions where the outcome is uh, extraordinary performance like Sean talked about. It's there almost every single time and a consistent level set execution and something that our business and the people in it and around it can depend on. And that's what we work to achieve. So from, from a very empirical um, non-philanthropic, non-feel-good sense, uh, very tactically, um, it, it, it's very effective to the point where I think it's interesting that internally, at the very beginning, 2016, 17, and 18, I was talking about this with my team, we used to ideate around, um, will it work? This idea of it, of bringing in an ARC associate. And so that ideation has shifted recently uh, because we know it works. We've had a lot of success points that we've all had experience with in New York. And so the ideation has shifted to where will it work next? And so that, that pivot uh, isn't a corny sentiment. It's an important, um, it's a, it's an important tactical change because uh, our team today sees positions evolving in our operations and is now, I think, in a position to be more proactive. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we, we reach out to ARC and say we have a position that we're thinking about creating where our experience. And look, it's not, it's not singular and it's not clearly the individual and the placement is not always the same. Uh, but my point is that uh, success is um, at this point um, expected, right? From a cold business perspective, and um, frankly, it's something that we, we count on. The greatest compliment that I could give 
on how I view the relationship is how my team and how my team views the relationship is it something that we depend on. Um, it's something that we depend on. And we don't depend, that, that dependency is not built on, on feeling good and it's there. Um, we are, we're truly honored. Um, but at the same time, the reason they're dream matches is, is because that is not the foundation of our involvement. The foundation of our involvement is the very sober understanding that we will be able to find new associates that will function at extraordinary levels within our business. And the off the menu benefits of that are off the menu and wonderful. And so we call that in big business, a big upside. Um, but I continue to thank you for your work because uh, without the development and the coaching and all the work that goes on before we ever meet these people, our ARC team members, current and future, um, our thanks is to you. And so uh, we continue to thank you today. Thanks. Scott, and we thank you. And we thank you for years um, at these employer breakfasts. And I think I've been at every one. Um, you, for, for so many years, you along, along with your colleagues have really talked about this partnership and how it makes business sense, makes business sense. It's wonderful for, for the employees, but it really, really makes business sense for an organization like yours. And you're very, very uplifting. Talking about uplifting, uh, our, my final question is directed to Tony Justic, managing partner at Maya Markey and Justic. Tony, I remember when we first, when you first said to me, you know, after one of the breakfasts, you know, next year I'm going to hire someone from someone from the Ark of Westchester. So you began your partnership in 2018 when you hired Alexandra. Um, Alexandria, can you share how the collaboration has evolved since you first partnered with the Ark Westchester? Sure, of course, Marcia. Uh, good morning, and before I start, I want to thank you. And the, uh, and the business council, because it's your partnership and your leadership. And I, as a member of the executive board and the immediate past chair, I know how important diversity, equity, and inclusion is to you. And you're leading the way on that initiative for our business community. And Tibby, the, the work that you do with the Arc of Westchester is incredibly important to the constituents um, that you serve. And I just also want to commend Sally and Sean and Scott. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be you know, in a group with all of you as employers who recognize that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is important. It's important for our community and it's important for our business success. So, so thanks for having me this morning. And you know, Meyer Marketing and Justic first worked with the Ark of Westchester actually several years ago before 2018 in a program where we had a few employers in our office for some administrative positions. Um, so in 2018, when the need arose, uh, Ark of Westchester immediately came to mind for us because of the success that we had the first time. And I wanna talk a little bit about the process. Um, and I've seen some questions in the chat about that. So we reached out to, to Ark and we were connected with the job coach and the job coach reviewed our job description met with us, discussed our needs for the position, and immediately had Alexandria, we call her Alex, had, had Alex in mind for, um, for our position. From day one, they worked with Alex to include her, to prepare her for her arrival here, for our culture, uh, to interview. Um, they came with her on her first day to ensure a smooth transition. Um, and throughout the whole process, the job coach has helped Alex be more independent, be confident, be, you know, deal with the day-to-day -day challenges of, of being an employee, and has really been a partner um, both to Alex and to us. And, and I say that because it's essential to ensuring success in the relationship with the AR, with, with ARC. Um, they also work with individuals outside of the office. So Alex is in touch with her job coach, not only when she's here, but outside of being here um, to have conversations about what's working or you know, what her challenges may be and, and how to make her more comfortable in, in, our, in our job environment. Um, Alex now, it's hard to believe it's, it's been about three years already that she's here. She's become part of MMJ. She's part of our culture. Um, she's more confident in working with us and she's more confident in our office setting. Um, the, the job coach, frankly, has, has the, the need for the job coach has not been significant. 
um, as we've gone forward because Alex has adopted so well. Um, she she came with us first at our prior office at on um, Bloomingdale Road, and she's now with us in our in our new office. And and she you know was able to set up her environment and her desk and her permanent place to to be in the way that she likes it. Um, but that said, our job coach is still always accessible by phone or by email, and they always are are you know checking in to see if it's um, how things are going for us. You know, Alex herself has worked incredibly hard to be successful here. Uh, she has a great attention to detail. She has great, great accuracy, great consistency. She's here all of the time. And, you know, as uh, Scott was just saying, she's somebody that we rely on. Uh, she has a very important role here. And, you know, um, she makes an effort to be social, to say hello. She always has a smile on her face. And, and most recently, she has come to us to advocate for herself to say, hey, you know, I can do more. Um, I can, I can, I'm willing to work harder. And um, I think with Sean, who said, you know, post pandemic, when we first began to reopen our office, Alex was one of the first folks who, who contacted us to say, I want to come back. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to be part of the team. And we needed her. And so um, we're really, really happy to, to have Alex as part of MMJ. Um, she makes us proud. She values her job. Uh, we value her commitment, we value her work ethic, and she's made a tremendous impact on, on everyone that she works with. Um, and, and I just wanna take the, the, the minute or so that I have left to maybe deliver a message to you know, the, some of the participants in the webinar today and the employers. You know, working with the ARC of Westchester program is not about us doing something good for ARC of Westchester, it's a good business decision. We have gotten much more out of our relationship with the Ark of Westchester than, um, than, than we've given back. And that's you know, critically important. Um, Alex is, is an important part of MMJ and she's an, an important part of our culture. She's uh, a staff member and she has relationships here. And so if you're, if you're thinking at all about moving down this path as an employer, I just encourage you to, to reach out to the Ark of Westchester because you won't regret it. I think your experience after a period of time will be like ours, where you will get more out of the relationship than you've actually put in. And so um, it's really, it's, it's, not, it's not about you know, helping somebody, it's about running your business in a better way and enhancing your culture. And so um, Tibby, I, once again, I want, just wanna thank you for, for what you do with the Ark of Westchester. And Tony, thank you for what you do with the ARC of Westchester, with the Business Council of Westchester and so many organizations that MMJ so expertly works with and supports as well. So thank you so very much. All of you, Scott and Tony and Sally, you are all inspiring. And our hope of course, after these uh, webinars and after these opportunities is that people are listening and will think about the opportunity they have for their company, as Tony Justic did just a few years ago, when they hear what a great business decision this is. So it's my pleasure with this to turn this over to Tippy Guzman um, to talk about um, to talk about how how this all works. Um, Tippy, we've heard from all these wonderful individuals and stories about successful placements from the ARC Westchester's employment program. Again, how do you do it so well? Tibby? Tibby, unmute. We all do it. There Thank you, you Marsha. Thank you for the mute advice too. <laughs> Um, and thank you all for, and especially my our panelists uh, today, for being such an incredible ambassadors for diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially by providing opportunities for people with developmental disabilities. So I'm going to share a few slides with you to talk about and answer all the questions that were asked. And we all know that people with developmental disabilities is a population full of talent but often forgotten or left out of the DEI discussion. The ARC Westchester is very proud to support people from birth throughout their lifetime. Today's discussion surrounds employment for our diverse population. 
Marsha, you asked, how do we do this? We do this by having a robust employment service division that is committed to an inclusive workforce. Let me also show you how well we do this. Our employment rate of 60% is nearly double the national average. We are far exceeding any of our counterparts. In other words, 60% represents 300 people demonstrating the power of diversity to 250 businesses in Westchester. At the start of the pandemic, we had only 20 people who were able to stay working in their jobs. Joseph Frank is an example. He began working at ABB Optical, you see his picture here, since 2016. His attention to detail and productivity has earned him full-time status only a year later. We are proud to continue to, um, that he was continued to work during the COVID shutdown. And as Scott mentioned earlier, ABB Optical um, is very proud um, of the dream match that we did here. Uh, but also, um, Scott, uh, I know that you will work also very diligently to hire more people during the pandemic, and we appreciate that tremendously. Now, uh, thanks to you, our business partners, we are on our way back and ready to grow with you. As you bring back talent to your workplace to, through your commitment to, diverse, to a diverse workforce, um, we really uh, are there here for you to do that. Now let's talk about how we do it so well. At the core of our success is our staff. You know, uh, again, Scott mentioned our staff as dream matchers and, and our staff is trained with evidence-based teaching methods to cultivate skilled employees valuable to your business. A successful match begins with our professional staff understanding your needs as an employer. Okay, that's the skill sets that we want to uh, uh, advance is your, your, your needs and connecting those needs with the skill sets and interests of the potential candidate. On the top right, you see Eddie and Sean just mentioned Eddie. Uh, Eddie's an employee of Cambry Hotel and Sean just mentioned how diligent he is to help uh, support Cambria Hotel during the pandemic. The making of an outstanding employee begins prior to getting hired. Um, I also, uh, Sean mentioned this too, by preparing the person to sharpen their skills and practice interviewing. A traditional interview may not always work adequately because it doesn't really highlight a person's real strengths and abilities. When possible, we recommend, and, I, and Tony mentioned, um, a working interview uh, that may work better, allowing the candidate to see firsthand the culture, the environment, and all the tasks that they'll be asked to do. If needed, we are available to create step-by-step -step schedules and provide a personalized approach to ensure success. On your lower, lower right, you'll see Ale Alexandra. Alexandra is um, the employee uh, that Tony mentioned at Mayor Markey and Justice Group. And uh, we are very, very proud that she acts so independently. And thanks to Tony, who talks about her initiatives. And, you know, we're, we're support her on everything she does. And, you know, we're there when, when she needs us, but we don't have to be there all the time. Let me share with you ways we prepare people for employment. Transition prep, prep for success project search, are ways we introduce working skills early on. Transition prep is a summer program for high school students. Prep for success is a hybrid curriculum based program for young adults. And project search uh, is a one year internship program that um, actually Sean is part of. Uh, we partner with Next for Autism and Sean is part of the Next Business Council. So thank you, Sean, for mentioning this, this valuable uh, support system for these students. And you can see the graduates here smiling and they graduate to employment and more than 75% of our graduates do find employment in the next few months. So we're very excited about that. And all these programs we have here foster independence and skills for success. Staying connected with our employers has proven to be valuable to the business in many ways. Our long-term employment partner, Jackson Lewis, reminds us 
This isn't about doing the right thing. This is about doing something that makes good business sense. ABB Optical, as you heard Scott, and I'm going to say it again, <laughs> talks about how you can get employees who will focus on the job and consistently accomplish the goals you set out for them. You can't ask for more than that. Our friends at By The Way Bakery share, we have three individuals working in our busy commercial kitchen. We, we work close with the York Westers to find the right fit to succeed. Thank you, partners. And lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to Regeneron. As uh, Marsha mentioned, Regeneron is our flagship employer. And Sally, we talked about the 10 year relationship that we've had. And we really appreciate how early on uh, Regeneron recognized talent and the different learning styles of the people that they hire uh, in the various departments and areas throughout their organization. And over the years, as Sally said, they've reached out to us when there are job openings that would be good for the candidates to interview for. So if you reach out to us, we can find you a candidate. Feel free to contact us and get started. And thank you very much. I appreciate all the comments that has been made by our panelists. And uh, we're open to, you know, I'm open to answer any questions. And we have a wonderful team of professionals that can help every single business and every type of business to diversify with a person with disabilities. Thank you. Tibby, thank you so much for your inspiring words and most of all for your leadership at the Ark of Westchester. Um, you, you've, you, we've, we've known each other a long time and we've just seen the growth and the passion and the excellence of your organization. So thank you, thank you so very much. It's my pleasure now to turn to some of the questions that we have. If we don't get to all the questions, again, you can contact Sherry Lewis, uh, Sherry Lewis um, at slewitt at arcwestchester.org. Um, Sherry, maybe, Sherry, maybe you can put your information in the chat box. That would be great. Um, but one of our first questions really um, has to do with skills. And this is to all panelists. And, and we're going to move quickly because we have several questions. But what kind of skills do you require for, uh, for the jobs? And also training. So Scott, I'm gonna ask you first, cause I know you have specific skills needed. Yeah, I mean, the, the answer to that question is nuanced and, and there are many, I think. And I, we're lucky, I think, in that we have um, different levels of sophistication in different roles throughout uh, our business operation. And uh, in fact, we have ARC associates working at various levels of sophistication. Important point I think here in answering is, is that there have been many cases where we've been able to evolve the sophistication. And in many cases, I think I heard earlier, uh, our ARC associate will ask uh, for a different position, not because of any heartburn with their current, but uh, a, a curiosity about doing more. Um, so, the limitation is, um, is really specific to the situation, but I think it's important to point that it evolves in many cases. Over Great, thank you. thank you. Tony, skills, skills for your job? Sure, um, you know, really um, accuracy and consistency um, and commitment, right? The, so the skills aren't so different than what you would expect in, in any employee, right? You want somebody who's going to, to come in to show up and to do their job with an attention to, to detail. And so, you know, in our, in, our, in our office, right, we're a professional services firm. Um, those, those really are the skills that, that we look for, for most. And, and we receive in abundance. Great. And Sally at Regeneron, because you have several types of jobs. We do. And so if I just added on to Scott and Tony's comments, I would say that, of course, we are in biotechnology, which means um, really being able to adhere to a very specific instruction of how certain types of work have to occur. It's important for our science. It's important for compliance. And so I would say just being able to consistently take the direction and execute whichever activities that person is engaged in is very important. So Sally, I'm gonna start with you with the next one. If you had a wish for what can parents and schools do to prepare our young adults for employment? 
So if I had a wish, um, I'm, I'm hiding my magic wand, but, but <laughs> here it is. <laughs> um, I think the first thing is for schools and teachers to understand that there is capability and opportunity in each student that is potentially unique and needs to be unleashed. And so while most schools have um, broad-based practices, I think sometimes um, the administrators or the teachers aren't quite sure how to engage with the student on a very personal level to unleash or unharness um, the, the potential that they actually have and to find the right way to draw that out. So the more schools and teachers can do that in partnership with the parents who know their children or know that child better than anyone else, I think what we will see is children flourishing more in the school system and better able then to step into roles um, with the, the partnership and the training that ARC helps us uh, receive. Thank you. Tony and Scott, do you have anything to add to that? If, what can parents and schools do to prepare young adults for employment? Uh, Marcia, I can add, add oh, a few things on that. Yeah, you know no what, worries. I'm not, I'm not seeing you at the bottom of my screen. I apologize. No, no worries at all. Um, you know, I have a nine-year-old and one of the, the biggest things that I try to teach him, which uh, transfers uh, hopefully as, as he grows up, for us, there's behaviors that are trainable and behaviors that are very hard to train. And in hospitality, being hospitable, um, being professional, saying please, you know, courtesies, thank you. Those are incredibly challenging to teach to somebody if they haven't been taught, you know, in, in bringing up. So those common courtesies that most of us think are common, not everybody has those. So mm -hmm. saying please, saying thank you, being open to change uh, are all qualities and behaviors that we look for. That's great. great. That's great. Right. Um, I can also add that, um, you know, from a personal experience as a parent of an adult with autism is to start early, you know, as early as possible, 12 year old, 13 year old, um, get out there, volunteer, go to the local pizza shop, fold some boxes, get that exposure. And I think that's, that's um, the best thing that we could do for, for our individuals. Great. So uh, there's a question about how open employers are to creating customized positions in organizations that match skills to work needed rather than requiring the employee to fit a prescribed job description. Uh, Marsha, I could take that question also. Um, Yep. The, uh, when Eddie joined our team, that position didn't exist. There was a need for uh, some of the job functions that Eddie did. However, we didn't create the program around Eddie. Um, we had needs for certain things in the hotel. And uh, so that position was a new position that we created. Um, and it, it, it morphed and it's changed in doing certain things as he's gotten more comfortable. Um, you know, I'll just add, we are starting to roll out a program at the hotel for our employees to have breakfast in the morning. And, um, you know, Eddie will, Eddie and Stephanie, our two uh, participants here, will be the ones that are rolling that out. So they're very open to change. And I think my favorite story real quick is uh, Eddie came to me and said, Sean, I think we could do a better job recycling. I said, tell me more about that. He says, well, you know, we can, introduce, you know, all the bottles and cans we get upstairs. Sometimes they don't make it down to the recycling. So their feedback is really important and uh, we appreciate it. Great, great. You know, there, there are some questions here um, generally about hiring and job search, someone with medical disabilities, someone with the master's. And I know that Tom Kleiner is listening here. So Tom, uh, Tom is the executive director of the Workforce Investment Board. Mm -hmm. And Tom, if you could put your information in chat so that people can, um, can, can reach out to you for those resources as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, so customized, customized positions, Any, anyone else want to, want to say anything on that topic? Uh, so Marsha, I would just add that I think similar to the approach that Sean described, we may have a particular business need around, we need work accomplished, but our flexibility is in how we can actually accomplish that work. So there's an opportunity to customize the role 
even though the role was going to be focused on um, an actual business need. And so far this approach I think has worked well for us. Great, anyone else? Marcia, you know, this is Tony. I, I would add that uh, I think to some extent it depends on size of employer, right? The, the larger the employer, the perhaps more ability there is to customize a specific position. And so as, you know, the, the, a parent of someone with an individ, you know, an individual with a developmental disability or ARC of Westchester, I think, you know, how you search and who you search for a particular type of customized position matters. And so targeting that search to the right type of employer, I think would be very important. Absolutely, and as we all know, as an employer and someone that works with employers, when you hire somebody, you have one idea in mind and then the role often becomes tailored and becomes a brand of the employee who is, who, who is, who is doing that role. That's what happens when things are successful. And I know that's what happens with so many employers who hire people from the Ark of Westchester. So I just want to so add to, to that point um, that our employment professionals are very skilled at customizing employment. Uh, this is actually they're trained for that. Um, and so they're, they are great resources for any business just in, in case you know they want just want to brainstorm on, on any ideas. Great. And again, if anyone has any further questions, Shari is available. I know Tibby is available. And I know all of these employers are very generous with their time when it comes to talking about this topic. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn again to Sally Paul Regeneron to, to wrap this up for us and to summarize what we've learned today. Sally? Wow, okay, so no pressure. Um, first off, I think um, each of us as employers have shared our experiences of what is an incredibly strong partnership with Tibby and the entire staff at the ARC Westchester. We know that individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities constitute one of the largest underserved populations in this country, and yet there is so much opportunity and potential here. Working with the ARC Westchester, we are able to identify the opportunity for roles, to train the right individuals for the right kind of work, to achieve solid business outcomes, and at the same time, to advance what I believe all of us genuinely desire, which is a commitment to show that we can move the needle in the power of diversity, equity, and inclusion across any dimension in any population, especially those with IDD. Thank you so much, Sally. And to all of the participants, to Tony Justic and Sean Mead and Scott Pearl and Tibby Guzman, um, your commitment and your, your leadership um, in the business community, um, especially in this area, is, is inspiring. We thank you. Again, I want to encourage anyone listening here who is interested in learning more to contact the ARC Westchester's Employment Services, Sherry Lewis, and she put her information in the chat box. Um, and we, we want to thank you for all of your great work, for all of your great leadership, and frankly, for, for providing the employers in Westchester with very valuable employees so that business can move forward in a very positive manner. And frankly, we've all learned a lot these past over a year now. Um, and I think what we've learned is to have the right employees in the right jobs with the skills needed and the training needed is even more important in today's economy than it was even 13 or 14 months ago. And the ARC Westchester is such a fantastic resource for Westchester County's employers. So thank you all for joining us. Be healthy, be safe, have a great day. Is there anything I'm missing, Tibby? I think you've done a marvelous job. I, I wanna thank everyone again. 
Um, and please contact us. There are great opportunities. We know that the growth is going to continue with more uh, employees um, now back at work, you know, pre-pandemic, and, and we want to be there with you too. Great. By the way, this webinar will be in the Business Council of Westchester's um, website in, in our, in our, um, our anti-racism, diversity, inclusion, equity section, as well as our Business Resource Center. We've shared it on social media, on Facebook. So please help us spread the word. Um, enjoy everyone. Have a wonderful day. And thank you. Thank you, Marsha and Tibby. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.